Welcome to Earth Archives. Among all the well-known pirates in the Age of Discovery, Captain Kidd was forced by his crew to bear the crime of piracy. He even denied the crime before his death. Let's get to know Captain Kidd today. Before the show starts, please subscribe, like, and turn on the little bell. If possible, leave your thoughts. William Kidd, a Scotsman in the 17th century, was the most famous guy in the history of pirates and was known as the King of Pirates. To this day, many crazy treasure hunters are still relentlessly looking for his legendary treasure. William Kidd was a controversial captain. He was a wealthy Scottish immigrant who was once a war hero and later a bounty hunter. He was eventually executed for piracy, but he refused to admit that he was a pirate until his death. In 1645, Captain Kidd was born into a devout Christian family in the port city of Greenock, Scotland. His father was a clergyman of the local Christian Presbyterian Church. The era when Kidd was born was also the era when Britain was showing its prowess on the world stage. At that time, because Britain and the Netherlands were full of conflicts over fisheries in the North Atlantic, commercial wars in the East, colonies in the Americas, and the slave trade in Africa and the West Indies, these disputes eventually led to the outbreak of war, in which Britain was defeated. It replaced the Netherlands as the dominant maritime power, and gradually became stronger. Kidd immigrated to America when he was 20 years old. At that time, Kidd was already an excellent and well-informed sailor who had been wandering at sea all year round. In 1695, William Kidd returned to Europe. He received a royal commission in London and was granted a privateering license to combat piracy in the Indian Ocean. He launched his activities based in Madagascar, but reports returned to England stated that he not only attacked pirate ships, but also plundered merchant ships. In May 1691, after Kidd married a wealthy widow, he bought a luxurious house in the southern part of Manhattan Island, then had children and lived a peaceful life. There is still Captain Kidd's former residence in Manhattan. What's going on? And what advice did Lord Bellamont give Kidd? It turned out that Bellamont told Kidd that the British government was worried about pirates in the Indian Ocean. Although the East India Company repeatedly urged the British Royal Navy to encircle and suppress pirates, Britain and France were at war, and the Royal Navy was unable to free its hands. Deal with the increasingly rampant pirate ships. Lord Bellamont suggested to Kidd that he could summon several English nobles to invest in the operation of an armed ship and entrust Kidd to be the captain. The mission of the ship is to attack those elusive pirate ships and recapture the stolen property. It not only secures Britain's maritime trade and combats the arrogance of pirates, but also allows the government to reap the profits. For those who invest in armed ships, they can also easily get a large amount of loot from pirates. Such a good thing, why not act quickly? Let us first talk about the East India Company at that time. When the Mughal Empire was at its most powerful, European merchants who wanted to do business in India had to obtain permission from the Mughal Emperor before they could live and do business in India. However, with the decline of the Mughal Empire, European merchants gradually became an invader who controlled the entire region of India. The East India Company was founded in 1600. Initially, the British mainly used the East India Company to do business. In 1613, Britain established the earliest British trading post in Sutra on the west coast of India. Soon, it established a commercial post in Madras on the east coast of India. In 1698, the East India Company purchased Calcutta on the east coast of India from the Mughal government. Although the village of Calcutta is small, it plays a very important role. The East India Company set up a trading headquarters here and continuously transported Indian food and industrial raw materials back to the UK, earning huge profits from it. In April 1696, four powerful men, including the Lord of the Admiralty, jointly sponsored the operation. Under their entrustment, Kidd built a 38-metre-long three-masted sailing ship, Adventure, equipped with 36 guns. Lord Bellamont recruited 150 sailors for him in New York. Lord Bellamont and Kidd signed an agreement, stipulating that 65% of Kidd's income should go to investors, Kidd would share 
and the rest would go to the sailors. Kidd also received a loan from Prime Minister Zomos. A charter signed by his lordship authorizing him to rest assured. In December 1696, Kidd, as the captain of an armed civilian ship, set out on the adventure. With many years of sailing experience, he thought that with such a strong backing, he would succeed immediately. But a series of events that happened next were completely beyond his original expectations. Maybe Kidd was unlucky. For nine months, they drifted on the sea with nothing but failed to encounter a cargo ship that could be robbed. The sailors began to complain. They complained loudly that the reason why they went to sea with Captain Kidd was because they wanted to do a big business. They also had a family and they needed to bring their wealth home and did not want to wander around the sea all year round. And the sailors hired later, because they were pirates, took the opportunity to try their best to confuse and incite everyone to become pirates. In fact, Kidd was a little anxious thinking about the powerful people who sponsored him. In order to stabilize the situation, Kidd was forced to sail to the Red Sea. In 1697, Kidd asked his men to hang a red pirate flag on the top of the mast of his fleet, and first attacked a fleet from Merca in the Red Sea, and then robbed a fleet from Aden, sailing from England. The trading ship sailed under the flag and plundered all the supplies on board. His men hung the prisoners with ropes and forced him to reveal the whereabouts of the money chest. Kidd then distributed the stolen property among the sailors. This attack and robbery, whether he was willing or not, factually speaking, he must have violated the first agreement between him and his sponsor, and legally he committed the crime of piracy. Later, Kidd began his most desperate piracy act. His venture first destroyed the mainmast of a merchant ship, and then fired at the oncoming escort warship. At this time, he suddenly found that the other party had raised the Union Jack flag, and Kidd suddenly broke out in a cold sweat. It turned out that he was attacking the fleet of the British East India Company, and the person fighting him on the spot was actually the British Royal Navy. Kidd quickly retreated, but the adventure was still recognized by the opponent. Kidd made a big mistake again this time, because he knew very well that what he got was a privateering license for an armed civilian ship. This kind of privateering license can only attack non-national ships under any circumstances, but it must not robbery of domestic ships. The East India Company and the Royal Navy immediately submitted reports to the government. The British government did not hesitate to declare that the English captain was not protected by the law and cancelled the charter to seize enemy merchant ships originally issued to him. At this time, Captain Kidd was already hard to defend and was branded a pirate. From then on, he and the notorious pirate leader Hen Everly, who had been hunted by him in the past, were ranked among the top two pirates. Later people cannot guess what Kidd was thinking at that time. They only know that not only did he become a pirate soon, but he also took risks and robbed the priceless treasures of the Mughal Empire and committed the most unforgivable crime of piracy. On January 30, 1698, he attacked a bark commanded by an English captain. When Kidd and all his sailors boarded the 500-ton ship, equipped with 10 guns and loaded with ships brought from Bengal only when he saw the large ship carrying rich loot did he realize that the treasures on board were the treasures of the Mughal Empire. Later, the pirates sold most of this loot because Kidd was in desperate need of cash to pay his sailors. Kidd's attack sparked outrage in both India and England, and the Mughal rulers threatened the British with revenge on their branches abroad. At this time, Kidd did nothing but hide diamonds, gold and valuable belongings, and even stole the beautiful three-masted sailboat as his own. This crazy robbery alarmed the King of England. Over the next two years, Kidd became a sea devil between the coasts of Madagascar and Malaba. He plundered a large number of merchant ships and accumulated a huge amount of treasures in a very short period of time. In later historical information, it is even said that he accumulated treasures worth billions, but of course, until his treasures are found, all figures are just guesses. In 1699, three years after leaving home, Kidd stopped at the Hispaniola Island in Latin America. After arriving at the port of Boston in July of the same year, he wrote a letter to Lord Bellamont in Boston, hoping that received the support of this lord, 
and promised to deliver £400,000 to Lord Bellamont for this purpose. Lord Bellamont verbally promised that Kidd would enjoy complete freedom in the British North American colonies, but as soon as Kidd and his sailors set foot on land, they were immediately arrested and imprisoned. A bag of gold dust worth about £1,000, as well as silver coins and some other gold items, were immediately found at his residence. On February 16, 1700, Captain Kidd was brought back to London as a prisoner of His Majesty the King of Great Britain. He spent nearly a year in an English prison and was finally sentenced to death for piracy and murder. The authorities allowed his wife to go to prison to say a final farewell to her husband. During the meeting, Kidd quietly slipped a small piece of parchment to his wife, and then whispered something. The guards watching from outside immediately noticed the secret transfer between the couple and confiscated the small ball of parchment. When I took it and looked at it, I saw that there were only four sets of numbers written on the paper. On May 23, 1701, Kidd was brought to the gallows, and seven other people were sentenced to death at the same time. When it was Kidd's turn to be tortured, the rope on the noose was suddenly torn. Taking this opportunity, Kidd repeatedly shouted that he was wronged. He also proposed to the judge who was enforcing the law on the side that he was willing to use countless gold and silver treasures in exchange for his life. This suggestion was rejected, and Kidd was hung up a second time with a thick rope. As a warning to other pirates, his body was covered with tar, fixed with iron rings and tied to a post by the Thames. He was tied up for several years, and seagulls soon flew in and pecked out his eyes mercilessly. Wild dogs always circled under his carrion, hoping that he would fall down and join in the fun. Later, people travelling on the Thames could only see a ghastly skeleton every day, because the birds had eaten all his carrion. Although many people were too scared to open their eyes in front of this skeleton and even took a detour, but for some people, they could never forget Captain Kidd. As time goes by, more and more people talk about him. Why is this? Of course, this is because of the confusing numbers and legendary treasures on his paper. Soon, someone deciphered the numbers he wrote, thinking that it implied 44 degrees 10 minutes west longitude and 66 degrees 18 minutes north latitude. According to these coordinates, you can find a small island called Gardena at the eastern end of Long Island, not far from New York. As a result, Gardena Island suddenly became lively. Treasure hunters have come to this little-known island. After several twists and turns, people finally figured it out. Back then, Kidd was arrested after leaving this island. Moreover, before he was arrested, he visited the owner of the island and bought a lot of food from the owner. Instead of paying in cash, Kidd gave the owner of the island a box of gold and some gems. And silk. It is said that in 1699, after Kidd wrote to Lord Bellamont, he gave him 11 bags of gold and silver through secret channels. Later people also discovered that Captain Kidd at that time, although he paid a lot of money to the Lord, he did not fully trust the man. Before he landed, he quietly came to this small island of Gardena. At that time, the residents of the island had seen Captain Kidd coming to the island from San Antonio every day. After landing on the island, he would move down some large wooden barrels, wooden boxes, and bags and transport him to the depths of the island. Those reedy, inaccessible swampy areas. As for what was in those big wooden barrels and boxes, the people on the island at that time certainly did not dare to get close to ask. In February 2013, researchers from Indiana University in the United States discovered wreckage such as cannons and anchors only three meters underwater in the waters near the Dominican island of Catalina. These wrecks are believed to be the Queda, abandoned by Captain Kidd in 1699. No, merchant ship. The discovery is likely to shed light on an important piece of Caribbean pirate history and the little-known story of Captain Kidd. The debris scattered underwater was first discovered by a local man, who immediately reported the situation to the government. The Dominican government invited Indiana University to identify the wreckage. American archaeologist Jeffrey said that the location of the merchant ship's wreckage, the structure and model of the cannon are consistent with the records of the ship in historical data. 
the Dominican government has granted a license to an American university to study the wreckage and transform the abandoned cannon and anchor site into an underwater museum that can be visited by divers in the future.